The Birth of Jesus, Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Good morning and Merry Christmas. My name is Ollie Benyon and welcome to my home. Christmas is here, so exciting. I wonder what brings you joy at Christmas. Maybe, maybe it's a gift for my kids. Um, the gift of slime is something they get really excited about. I don't personally understand why. Um, for my wife, she, she asked for bedding, like, you know, sheets and things. I know, very boring. Um, I recently got a gift from my brother uh, to drive some really fast cars. Not just one, not two, but three supercars. Now that, folks, is a proper gift. Now I can't see all, uh, your gifts today, but I have been blessed by the Lord with particularly large ears. And so I believe that if you uh, were to shout out your favorite gift, the gift that brought you the most joy this morning so far. If you shout it out up at three, then maybe I'll be able to hear it. One, two, three. Go. Yeah. Lego. We got some Lego. We got some dancing unicorns. Peppa Pig. Um, some more slime. Um, Nerf gun. Socks. Oh, I got socks. Yeah, I've got my Christmas socks on. Uh, yeah. Bedding? Oh, forget that. Boring. Boring. Anyway, thank you for shouting out your gifts. Now, gifts are great, aren't they? We love gifts, but maybe there are other things in life that bring us joy. Um, maybe it is acing your exam, end of year exam. You remember those times when we got to sit our end of year exams? Well, maybe it's that. Maybe it's um, seeing your, your team, your favorite team, win the cup. Maybe it's being asked out by someone you, uh, you like and you fancy. Or maybe it's something a little closer to Christmas Day. Um, you know, turkey, Christmas stuffing, 
Brussels sprouts. Don't be haters, folks. Christmas, you know, sprouts only come out once a year. Um, how about uh, being with loved ones that we haven't seen for a long time? That brings us joy, doesn't it? Or listening to your favorite song. All of these things can bring us joy. But if we're honest, most of them bring us joy just for a, a short amount of time. But what if there was something out there that could bring us joy year upon year? Well, what if there was something that could bring us joy no matter what age or stage you are in life? Well, the passage that was read to us in verses, uh, two, chapter 2, verses 10, it says this. The angel says, do not be afraid. I bring good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. The Christmas story promises great joy for all people. Now we may have heard this story time and time again that we, we stop listening. Maybe we think, well, we've heard it all before. It, you know, I know what happens. I know what to expect. But I want to encourage you this Christmas morning to, to, to marvel and to be surprised by the joy of Christmas, by what God did when he gave the gift of his son to us. Now, I have with me four gifts, and, um, and in them we're going to discover some of the surprising things about this Christmas story. Now, normally I would invite people up to do that, but at the moment I only have those uh, in my house who I can ask to do these things. So, I'm going to invite child number one, conveniently named, to come over here. Child number one, uh, here's your first present. Would you like to, uh, could you open it up? What do we have in there? What have we got? A baby. A baby! Now, I remember the day that you were born and uh, I remember taking you, your little, little, little body, putting it into the, the child car seat and I driving really slowly because I was, I was really nervous about uh, you know, the responsibility that I had to, to look after you and getting you home and they're hard work babies. If you're a parent at home, you'll know with a small baby that they're hard work. For one, they cry, you know, like a lot, a lot of crying. And you've got to feed them, you've got to clothe them, you've got to bathe them and you've got to extract things from the bottom of your, your bottom uh, that you don't ever want to have to do uh, again. And um, what, and one thing, they are incredibly vulnerable. You need a parent to be looking after you and because they're helpless. And for some incredible reason, um, this is the plan that God had for when he sent his son into this earth to be our savior. He came as a helpless baby. Now, how surprising is that? Pretty surprising? Yeah. That's pretty surprising. Now, you can, uh, you can go now. You can take the baby with you. It can be your baby. Well, now I need child number two. Child number two, can you, uh, can you come here? Hello, child number two. Here's your, your present. Would you like to open it up? Oh. What have we got? A magazine. Do you want to show it to people? It's a magazine. It's not just an ordinary magazine. It's a, a magazine full of celebrities. Can you see that? Lots of celebrities. Well, um, unlike the people... Uh, you know, in this magazine, God didn't choose to send his uh, son into the world to, to be parents, and for his parents to be celebrities. They were not special. They were not famous people. Instead, they were a person called Mary, uh, a teenage girl called Mary, and a carpenter called Joseph. And these were the people. They came from an ordinary town. And there was nothing about them to, in the, about their background or their status that gave their, their son Jesus an advantage in life. You see, God chose ordinary people to serve him and to be part of his plan. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that surprising? 
There you go. Why don't you take it away? You, uh, you can have that. Don't read it. It will just fill your brain with rubbish. So uh, now I need uh, child uh, uh, number one again. You, you want to come? We've got a, a third present. Do you want to take this third present? Here we go. When you open that third present, what have we got? Come on, card. Open it up. Need to be done. What have we got in there, Emily? Wonderful. What is that? What is that? It's lots of. It's got animals, and it's in a whole box of poo. Nice horse manure poo. Now, why do you think I've given you that? You have no idea. Well, Jesus was born in a cold and smelly and uncomfortable place, in a stable, wasn't he? And if you could choose anywhere in the world to, to be born, uh, and would you have chosen somewhere like this? You know, you probably have chosen somewhere nice and comfortable and warm and, you know, this, you know a lovely place with a nice fancy bed and a big room, not a stinking stable. Well, no one expected this. You know, do you remember when the wise men came to find Jesus? Uh, remember where, where the wise men went? They went to Herod's palace. They went to Herod's palace, that's right. They went to Herod's palace because that's where they thought a king would be born. But that isn't a place where a king would be born. Instead, he was born in a stable. Once again, God chose to act in a surprising way that no one could have expected. He chose for his son to be born in poverty so that everyone could have access to him. Now, thank you very much. You may leave with uh, the box of poo and animals. Uh, child number uh, two, if you would like to come over here and to open our final box, wouldn't you come around over here? Okay, so uh, do you want to have it a go? Let's do it. That's yeah, fine. Open it up. Uh, here we go. What have we got in here? Whoa, what is up here? That was rather surprising having you jumping out of the box. And I wonder if the angels sounded as good as that when they first met the shepherds. And I wonder if the sheep looked as cute as you when uh, they, uh, in, in, in the field. Wonderful, wonderful. That was a surprise. Now, God chose to tell this amazing story of the arrival to ordinary shepherds. And today we love shepherds. We love shepherds. My, one of my best friends is, is a shepherd and uh, I have great respect for him. But in first century Palestine, uh, shepherds, they didn't have the best reputation. Do you want to go? You can go there. Why don't you go? They didn't have the best reputation. Uh, in fact, uh, they were probably best they're left to their own devices off in a field. But it was these despised people that the angels gave the message of the birth of Jesus for the first time. Why? Because God's news of joy was not just for, for kings and for queens. It was for everyone. Once again, God acted in a, in a very surprising way. Well, thank you very much, children, for all your help. Um, so God's master plan to bring joy to the world was a surprising one. One, God came to earth as a baby. He didn't choose someone famous or special to be his parents. Jesus was born in a cold and smelly and stinky place. And God chose to tell this amazing news of the joy of Jesus' arrival to ordinary shepherds. But this is not the, the most surprising thing about this story. The reason we continue to celebrate this birth of Jesus all these years later is because God came to earth uh, as, as a baby in Jesus because he loves us, because he loves us. None of us have done anything to deserve his love. In fact, uh, we've, we've, we've rejected God. We've turned away from him time and time again. But God came to earth to rescue us from the mess 
that we've got ourselves into. He came to earth to invite us back into a relationship with him. He came to earth to be our saviour. Now on this Christmas day, God is offering you through Jesus a fresh start. He offers to forgive your sins and to give you his gift of relationship. Now this is the reason that the angels, those angels who sang to those shepherds, why they said joy to the world. For there is nothing more, more joy giving than knowing that you are loved, knowing that you are forgiven and knowing that you can have a relationship with the Lord God. It is the reason we can all know true joy year after year after year. Well, we're going to finish there. And in a moment, we're going to have our family prayers. But for now, Merry Christmas.